You see, when I was younger, I used to read the Quran regularly. I used to believe everything about Muhammad that my parents had taught me. And I believed everything about Islam, and I used to say the Salat regularly. I used to attend the Masjid regularly. And then I began to question, I began to wonder whether or not the things I had been taught about Hazrat Isa were true, or if maybe I had learned some things that needed to be corrected. And I met a friend of mine in university, his name is David Wood, and we began investigating things about Hazrat Isa, about the Injil, and I began to see that the Injil was actually a very trustworthy document, that it in fact said all sorts of things that I had never been taught that it would say, and that it said that Hazrat Isa was the way to get to Allah, that I had to be able to listen to what Hazrat Isa said about his life, that he would take my sins upon him in order for me to get into heaven. Now, I didn't believe it at first. I didn't believe that that was the way to go. I always believed that I was going to carry the burden of my own sins, that I was going to be the one who at Judgment Day had to stand before God with no one to intercede for me. And as we looked in the history of it all, we began to see that Hazrat Isa was placed on the cross as opposed to the traditional interpretation of chapter 4, verse 157 of the Quran, and that he did die on the cross, and that, in fact, he rose from the dead. See, these are things that I had never been taught in Islam, but when I looked at them historically, I could find no way around them. All the evidence pointed to the fact that Hazrat Isa did, in fact, die on the cross and rise from the dead. And that the Injil was corrupt? Well, my parents had always taught me that the Injil was not something we could trust. There had been many changes in the Injil, and it had gone from one language to another to another, and we no longer know what it says. But as I looked, historically I found that there are thousands of copies of the Injil which show that it says now what it said thousands of years ago, when it was first written down, that it is very trustworthy. So I began to see, number one, that the Injil is trustworthy, and number two, that it shows me a picture of Hazrat Isa that I would not have gotten from the Qur'an and from the Ahadith. And as I began to see that this is the case, I started slowly asking Allah, Allah, tell me who you are, who is Hazrat Isa? What is it actually saying? What should I follow? And as I started crying out to Allah, He started pouring into my life dreams and visions, which slowly led me to believe that the way of Hazrat Isa is the true way, and that I should accept Him as the salvation for my sins. And so, in 2005, I gave my life to the way of Hazrat Isa. And since then, I have been filled with joy, filled with peace, and I go and I share this joy and peace with everyone who will care to hear about what it means to be free, free from sin, free from the worry of hell, and rather free to love God with all my heart, all my mind, all my soul, and all my strength.